Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the Property and Investor podcast, the podcast where we speak to some of the most interesting, inspiring, and resilient people in property, investing, and beyond. I am, of course, am your host, Paul Lanfear. Now, before we begin, as ever, my inner lawyer needs to say something. Nothing in the podcast is financial, health, or legal advice. Obviously, seek your own professional advice. Now, as some of you will notice, this is a very special podcast. This is a special mini series of the Property Investor podcast, where we, um, which is separate from the long form ones, where we speak to what are called the inner circle all stars. And I have one of those for you today. People who have had the very great privilege of working with as part of my inner circle group uh, o- over the years. And we've got an early adopter on the podcast today, a very early adopter. It is with genuine <laughs> Delights that I introduced to the podcast, Simon Duckworth. Welcome to the podcast, Simon. How are you doing, my friend? Many thanks, Paul. That was a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. I'm uh, very well. Thank you. Very well indeed. Good. So you are one of the early adopters. So you did like one of the first iterations of the the um, inner uh, inner circle, which is and so it's fabulous to have you on the podcast. Now then, um. Do a bit of an introduction. So tell the good people listening to the podcast a little bit of your your background just to get us started. So yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, so we are Triangle Property Solutions, myself and Heidi. Mm-hmm. Um, Heidi does more the interior design side of the business. Um, I'm more the uh, buying, selling, renovating, project managing, trading. I've got many, many hats, um, bit of sourcing, you know, um, auction, auction strategy, bit of mentoring on that side of things to people that really want to fast track a, an auction, uh, mentorship. I can, I can help with that and teach you the ups, downs, pros, cons, ins and outs. Very good. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's us. Very good. And full disclosure, to get this out of the way, um, Simon, yours and Heidi's properties are absolutely phenomenal. I've had the great pleasure of seeing them over the years. Uh, The Inner Circle people have very kindly been invited to visit them. They are absolutely phenomenal. I can definitely say that. that, We're talking 10 out of 10. So congratulations on the great work. And you are a formidable (laughs) team. So uh, uh, to allow people from the podcast to have a... Pretty experience. sure you'll be referring to Heidi's interior design there. Well, it's a team effort, isn't it? It's a team, <laughs> it's a team effort. So what I'll do, I want to make sure we do in the show notes is we'll, we'll put it, the link tree in the show notes so the good listeners to the podcast can click on the link and have a look at uh, the Instagram stuff. It's absolutely phenomenal. So tell us a little bit about where you were before you joined the Inner Circle programme tricky question isn't it I've got to go back sort of three and a half years so um I guess like um like a lot of people I don't know you you start off in property don't you you ramp up you do the you do the courses that are the hard sell Mm -hmm. and and you know if you I guess if you put it if you you know if you're Yorkshire you put that money to use don't you and you go away and you do that for a few years and you and you and I was probably at the point where I'd, we'd done that. We'd done quite a few deals, full time in property, settled down, and then was looking at something else. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, you were you were doing, you were still doing some mentorship courses, mm-hmm. and um, I was happy to get you know fed down mm-hmm. what you were doing to to help with what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we were doing a commercial course at the time. Yeah, yeah, we were. Um, all pre-lockdown, obviously, a very yeah. different world. Um, and yeah, I went, I went hunting for a commercial building, and 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 we're still messing about with that commercial building now. To be honest with you, even to this day, all those years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it was easy, Simon, everybody would be doing it. Um, <laughs> but you're right we've done done a hard bit we've got the planning approved you've done the hard yards so when do you put like the spades in the ground uh so right now we've Mm -hmm. since getting the planning we've just gone for uh, an off-market um sales price to see if anyone's got an appetite for us to not put a spade in the ground very good um so we're just at that stage at the minute and we've had some decent offers come in so 
How exciting. Will, will, we be, will we be putting a spade in the ground? Question mark. So this might turn out to be a long planning gain flip in the end, potentially. Yeah, 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 totally. So we've separated a bit of land as well. So we've, mm-hmm. got, so we've already got that. Uh, yeah. Do we talk numbers on here? You can talk numbers if you wish. Yeah, give us some, give, give, yeah, give us some headline numbers. <laughs> so we're looking at offers over over 1.5. Uh, yeah. We're all in for about 800. So. Very good. Very so, yeah. good. So that that um, so, that'll keep the wolf from the door, won't it, Simon? So, so <laughs> fingers, fingers crossed. It'll be the longest, <laughs> the longest fucking <laughs> game flip ever. But you never know. And then we've still got the other bit of land to work with. Okay. And obviously, in the, you know, in the meantime, I've still got other flips, other HMOs at different stages of renovation as well. Very good. And as I say, I've we're going to. Re- I've just realised I'm rambling, and I've You're not, not rambling. Your first question. No, you have. You have. <laughs> Um, and so, so well, let, let, let's drill down. Let, let's make this easier for you. So let's drill down to it. So thinking back to those days, which was, I think, 2019. Uh, um, yeah. Like what were the kind of problems and challenges that you experienced? Obviously, you you know, you, you, you've done your pr- property training. You got busy. You've got, you know, you really kind of got into the trenches. You've done the work. Um, what were the like problems that you were experiencing at that point? OK, so. um It's not necessarily a case of what problems was I experiencing, but mm-hmm. I think what what you offer is the opposite of what I am. So, okay. so I just I'm just all about what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next. Okay. Deal, 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 deal. And you know, you I think you actually sit back, take stock, plan, yeah. organize. Um I'm sure you've got an anecdote in there for if you don't plan, you live someone else's life or, so, or you follow someone else's plan. Yeah, know? yeah. The, well, that's if the you, classic. You make your own plan. That's you'll the Jim. Someone else's. I think you that's ha- it. You have you have more or less quoted the late great Jim Rowan. You either, you, either <laughs> desi- you either design your life or you allow someone else to do it and you follow their plan. And guess what they've got in store for you? Not very much. Um, yeah. But yeah. So you were like busy. So, so I'm the like opposite. The antithesis of you. I'm the opposite of you. You're kind of busy, crazy, always at it. Is is that what we're saying? Yeah, totally, hundred percent. So it was, it was, it was nice to, yeah, do some plan, do some planning and organization, and try and be better with your time. And and you know, you you're good at the big picture stuff. Mm-hmm. So what are we all doing this property thing for? Because you know, in the early days, it's like. Why are you doing property? Oh, I just want to be full time in property, and then you've just gone from job to job, haven't you? Mm-hmm. So you start to have to reassess again. Why are you doing property? Um, because oh, I want this much a month. All right, okay. So then you get there, and nothing's changed again. So you have to ask yourself the question again: Why are you doing property? You know. Mm-hmm. So I guess, I guess, at some point, you need to hit stop drive to Scarborough and go surfing at four in the morning to answer the question, why am I doing property? <laughs> I've, I've, in the interest of, ba- uh, of balance, I should say other, other recreational activities are, <laughs> are available and do I mean, your own due diligence and at your own risk and all that thing. But yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Getting, getting I mean, my, in my case, cycling or a game of golf. Yeah, exactly. And I remember when we worked, worked, together i think the the first question i would ask you pretty much every time uh we had the pleasure of seeing each other like one-on-one is um when's the last play time you played golf then simon and i got a mixture of answers i have to say well i got better at it (laughs) (laughs) it's the main takeaway paul (laughs) <laughs> the um uh, well that's all that, honestly if that is the main takeaway i'm really quite pleased about that i remember my my most famous one favorite one uh was that you had organized a bit of a a property lads one uh and um yeah you some great people that we we know mutually i think you'd all got them onto the back of a golf cart and you were taking them around a local golf course <laughs> and uh i have to say that 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 brought me great pleasure to hear that and more of that i think so I suppose um, we've kind of hinted at it a little bit, but like, how how did it help? What you know, what kind of um, how did did we make any progress? I suppose during the time that we were together. 
Um, so it, it's it's a really good support group, and um, you know, property can be a very lonely place. Mm -hmm. Quite, you know, and it, it's nice to have a group around you that you can trust in, um, and that you know that you're all targeting development so you're all on the same upward curve um yeah for, for for a very reasonable price as well paul because you know you look at you look at some of the other big stuff with mm -hmm. bigger names you're up to 50ks now aren't you for some of the whopping courses yeah that, definitely. you know 12 but months blah -de blah -de blah and you're probably not getting as much support mm -hmm. there as you would in a nice tight local group, which is what what this is. And I think and as I, as I, as I said pre-recording, mm -hmm. definitely up for doing it again. Just when I, you know, when I see myself not running at a million miles an hour again, uh, when, about, whenever that is. <laughs> well, I'm not going to like dive into some live mentoring on the podcast with you because it's not appropriate. But other to plant the seed that it it's never gonna it's never gonna slow down because it never does unless um we put it into place. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna delve any further into that. I'm obviously you know delighted to hear those comments. I'm uh, you know I really I really am, and, and I think you know there is a big difference between the big corporate monsters that I think we've all we've all done, and they have have their value I'm not discredited at all it's i suppose it's what people are looking for it's horses for courses as well i think of um i was i'm not going to do this but i was thinking of the analogy of like is it the evil empire versus the rebel alliance but um i don't you can't go around calling people the evil <laughs> empire can you but um it is that thing of um you know sometimes it's like well what do you want do you want like a hundred a hundred thousand followers and to be semi-famous or do you want to have like a couple of handfuls of people who you know have really got your back and that you can kind of grind it out in private as well, you know, and, yeah. and, and uh, you know, and do the work and build in private, I suppose. Yeah. What... Well, one of, one of the nicest, one of the best things is, you know, you, you and Liz, are, and I've always said this, the most honest people in this industry, right? Way back from when we were doing the angels courses and all sorts. And it's mm. because, it's because you're coming from a place of non-sales, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that makes such a difference when if you're elsewhere and you know that just around the next corner is the next big thing that you need to pay the next chunk of money for. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, means, it means the advice that you're getting is coming from an honest place with no agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need, in my opinion. Wow. Well, obviously, uh, that is a, obviously, I'm delighted to hear that. Uh, I really am. That means a lot to me, Simon. Um, go on then. So what's, what's the future look like? Let's, let's, let's switch gear. Let's talk a little bit about the, about the future. I mean, I obviously, obviously follow, follow you on Instagram. I'll put all the links in, in, in the Instagram stuff, but what, you know, where do we go from here, Simon? What's, what's next? Um, do you know, I've still got in the back of my mind. So right now I've got another flip got a flip that we're just starting this week uh i've got another hmo that's in planning mm -hmm. um so i've got them to see through i've got obviously this wakefield commercial building mm -hmm. to see through um i've got a bit more cash that i need to spend elsewhere as well mm -hmm. an investor that we've just looked after and paid back Fantastic. so it's one of them. I'm on the back. I'm on the start of an auction cycle again. So mm -hmm. every cycle equals opportunities. Uh, they've even given me an auction house jacket now. Have they check, now? Check me out on location. Very good. <laughs> so it's one of them. What does the future hold? At, at, at some point in the future, I do fancy having a rest for a bit. Sure. <laughs> but, so yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe we can target having a rest, but there's there's a there's a lot to do in the meantime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm still slightly concerned that on the HMO side of things, I've got too many eggs in one basket. If you okay. know what I mean, 
I'm sure yeah. you feel exactly the same. If mm -hmm. if we were to get walloped with, you know, the inevitable council tax issue across the board on every room, um, I, I'd have a lot of stuff that instantly wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably have to look at differing strategies. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we've said stuff so so after this next HMO maybe I don't do a HMO for a bit mm -hmm. and add mm. a bit bit of kind of diversification in the portfolio and all that kind yeah, of thing yeah yeah but it's, it's one of them isn't it when when I see a property a deal a house or whatever you want to do whatever is the best for that mm -hmm. which is often you know, that often dictates what you do to it rather than you dictate what you do to it. Yeah, definitely. You kind of optimise the property for, for, for what it is. Um, but I think, you know, you. I mean, you're very highly skilled. I think if you wanted to, um, you know, maybe look at some other schemes other than the classic kind of HMO scheme, I mean, you'd be well, you'd be well capable of do, doing that. And that yeah, maybe yeah, could yeah, be definitely. the direction of travel. Definitely. I mean, it's like with flips as well. You've definitely got to work in a bit more margin now mm -hmm. for for a potential dip in the next twelve months, haven't you? So I'm feeling a little bit less hungry mm -hmm. to get stuck into a flip, but um, you know, maybe I need a block of flats or something like that. I think a block of flats sounds perfect for you. <laughs> And, and and I think you're right to uh, be reasonably reflective at the, this point. You know, what we're in Q, Q4 of 2022. I mean, you know, interest rates, you know, renovation costs are, you know, as high as they've ever been. So I think you're right to have a, a moment of reflection before you kind of bite off the next thing. And that is what I advocate, isn't it? Is that, you know, take every year as it comes, but kind of have a reflect, have a you know, do have a decent period of reflection before biting off the next thing and decide, is this still my direction of travel? Is Does this light my fire? Is this what I want to do? Is it meeting all the things I want want to do? Um, I'm keen for you to tell people uh, in a, like, it, I appreciate we touched on it in the intro, but I didn't don't want it to be missed, is like, you, I mean, you're a genuine auction expert. Um, so... <laughs> take people through like your menu of all the different kind of offerings that you have because you do have quite a few so like give us give us the menu of what you're kind of up to so that if people are listening to the podcast and they resonated with you know with, with what you've said and they're keen to learn a bit more like what what are the kind of things that they could kind of talk to you about if they're interested in doing that uh definitely you know due diligence is the easiest one Mm -hmm. So uh, we could run through a deal together, you know, as a, as a real short term, quick something, you know, maybe someone's tempted in something in an auction or not in an auction or they want to refurb costing up or they want to, you know, a lot of people don't include all the costs when mm -hmm. working them out. So mm -hmm. got a really good deal sheet for that, that mm -hmm. I don't mind sharing. Um, or it could be, it could be mentorship, you know, you're totally new to it. I, my mentorship is based on uh, a three month, a three month start to finish, you know, nothing, you'll have a deal. Uh, three months should see us through two auction cycles. Mm -hmm. And if we implement everything and do all the correct level of homework, you should have a deal. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, I could, you could give me our criteria and I could uh, find something that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I could, you know, like on a sourcing side. So that that's the three. three that's your three. Very good. Um, and so it's final question before then, I'm going to link people to how to contact you. Um, I suppose it's that is that final question of like if if somebody was watching these these podcasts and they were thinking about the inner circle, thinking about coming to you know the breakfast and that kind of thing, and what would you what would your advice or what would your comments be about that? Uh, my, well, my comments would be come to the breakfast first, um, so you can witness first hands that you're you're in 
good company. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it's a it's a great event. It's once a quarter. Um, yeah, you'll compare compared to anything else, you'll you'll love it. It's mm-hmm. a different kettle of fish. Okay. But it's professional people that are, you know, it's the next level up, isn't it? From from your your pins and your PPNs. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit more. It's a bit more. You know, there's real deals. There's real good deals getting done in that room. So what Simon's alluding to there is the in-person ones. So we have the, the Zoom ones, we have the in-person ones, uh, and we will definitely be doing some in-person ones in 2023. And then in terms of somebody who's kind of on the fence with in a circle, maybe they've done, they've been through, been through that. Any sort of final words, uh, you know, what you, you would say to them if they're saying, well, Simon, you know, I'm kind of thinking about in a circle, what do you think? Um, I, I would say, you know, write down, write down all your goals of, for what you want for that year. Mm-hmm. and talk to you see how much you can help with them sounds good to me perfect so how can these good people uh contact you what is the best way of people listening to the podcast to reach out to you uh probably my phone number to be honest i know i know okay. not many people uh <laughs> not many people give out the phone number these days right so i won't but okay but yeah getting get in touch on either my website triangleproptysolutions.co.uk Sure. Um, or Instagram, which Paul will know the address for. I'll put it in the link. <laughs> don't we? Perfect. So let's do that. So let's let's leave it there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop, pop the link tree, um, which was clearly prepared by somebody else and not Simon. I'll say that. It's, Thank it, you, uh, Heidi. Yeah, um, it's a fantastic link tree. It's got all of their stuff. Have a click on it. Have a look around all the different stuff. I highly recommend you go into the Instagram stuff and see just the absolute phenomenal work that's been done. And then reach out to Simon, um, you know, either through the website or through Instagram. Simon, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. It is very, it's been very a pleasure, much Paul. Thank you as always. Thank you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, um, to discuss property investing, resilience, all the stuff that Simon and I have just talked about. Please do come to the next Property and Investor Breakfast, link in the show notes. Follow the podcast, subscribe to it. If you've enjoyed it, give it a five star review link. Uh, and then all my social media links are below. Keep well, speak soon. And thank you very much for listening to the podcast.